Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. Well, another huge news week. We've got plenty of green across the board again. Some altcoins in particular really starting to pump, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit towards the end. A few good trades we had, but let's get into all that news. I do want to welcome nearly 40 new members to our private Facebook group. You guys get two extra videos a week. This week we had the price discovery pyramid talking about the difference between value and price. And I also did a video about how I'm personally thinking about these altcoins that are pumping and whether or not to chase them and this cycle that is starting to occur. On this day in crypto history, well, there's only two that I want to mention today. Nine years since Bitcoin Pizza Day, that famous day in history when someone bought two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoin to give Bitcoin a value for the first time. And the Korean premium back in 2017, when things started to heat up, Bitcoin was trading for $2,000, but over $3,000 in Korea. And when we have that next cycle and that global FOMO, we're going to see big premiums in certain countries where it's hard to get your hands on crypto. But into the local markets here and the bank stocks in particular really surged after our election result in Australia. There's also reports coming in that this week's auction clearance results are really positive. So what do you guys think? Is this just a temporary bounce or is the confidence back in the markets and the economy is going to pick up now the Liberals are in power? Over to the UK and we say farewell to Theresa May. So she's had a really tough gig, three years trying to sort out this Brexit mess. And you know you do feel for these politicians who, if they try to fix things long term, it tends to not be popular with the voters short term. And this isn't just the UK. This is all countries that are too short term focused. So it'll be interesting to see who takes up that role. Um, good luck. And if they're going to sort out that Brexit mess. And if you're in the UK, let me know your thoughts on that one in the comments below. Sticking in Europe here, and we have Deutsche Bank shares really tanking this week, and they're going to have some uh, tough cutbacks, they say here. But what this tells me is that the GFC is not behind us. This is still lingering. You know, banks are still suffering. They're not as sure and as safe as we're being told. And if this continues to dominate the headlines, more people are going to ask questions about our banks and what's really changed uh, since that speculation and the GFC. Over to the US now and Nestle cutting 4,000 jobs. So if we think about the US consumer and Main Street as opposed to Wall Street where you know stock markets are at record highs, we're seeing headlines like this come through. You know, 14,000 layoffs at General Motors, up to 23,000 possibly at Ford. So what do consumers cut back on in their spending? It's certainly a new car or upgrading their car, but also housing, that mortgage, the most expensive you know asset that you own. And Existing home sales now having their worst run since the housing crisis. So we're certainly getting signs that the consumer isn't spending as much money in the US and that is going to you know, hit the bottom line of many companies if this continues. Now, it's not going to be helped by these trade wars. So we've seen all this big talk and Google, Intel, even Microsoft later this week cutting ties with Huawei and we know that China are going to push back and all these tariffs they're going to push up the price, guys. These companies aren't going to foot the bill, and it hurts the end consumer. So when the chip manufacturer walks away, again, you've got to find a new one. All these things just hurt the company, and it's going to push up the price of a lot of goods. And in China, we're already seeing you know, um, propaganda about supporting local and not buying American goods and so on, which shouldn't really be a surprise. But smartphones is something we've spoken a lot about, and China are responsible for a lot of the rare earth metals. And you know, headlines here, a possible ban coming. So they're going to try and push back on the US um, and, you know, hit them where it hurts if they're going to put tariffs on all those Chinese goods. Now, smartphone market is pretty competitive these days. I've spoken about it a number of times on the channel and you've got to have an edge. And Samsung integrating all these crypto wallets uh, to their basic smartphone as well as their more expensive models uh, is going to be, you know, really attractive to a lot of users. There may be a point of difference and we'll see if the others follow suit. But I want to talk about uh, Chairman Powell, and he's come out and said that you know we do have some stability risks with the record debt, high valuations, leverage, and uh, these collateralized loan obligations as opposed to collateralized debt obligations in the GFC. So all is not well. The market's hanging on every word that the Fed says, and watching those you know trade wars, and that's the two themes. And I think markets can definitely go lower if we don't get a resolution for either of those fairly soon. But I love this tweet from Sven Heinrich here. 
No central banker will give you a heads up when there's a crisis coming, guys. I think I read a stat the other day that there's been 95 recessions in the past 50 years from all different countries around the world. And there's been, I think it was three or four where the local economists had agreed and predicted that there was a recession coming. So you're not going to hear it uh, from those in charge. Their job is to project confidence in the economy and tell everyone that all is well. On to Facebook coin. This was huge news in the crypto market this week that they are going to launch their own coin and call it Global Coin. And it is going to be a stable coin. If you want to know more about this, I did do an interview recently uh, with Phil Shelper, who is an expert in marketing loyalty points and rewards programs. And he was really actually excited about this and the use as a stable coin. But geez, wouldn't this be a headline if Full Circle and the Winklevoss twins did partner back up with uh, Mark Zuckerberg. They've got their own stable coin. I'm not sure how this would work together, but uh, certainly some reports coming out that they were in talks this week. Now, Coinbase also has a lot of their own stable coins, but listing DAI this week was a bit of a surprise to me. Now, they've got all those centralized stable coins, uh, the Winklevoss coin in included, but uh, good news listing a decentralized stable coin to give you guys that option uh, to store your DAI. Maker is moving to multi-collateral DAI fairly soon, and this is an event that I'm really bullish on. I think it's going to push the price of three other coins up uh, significantly, and I've done a video for members about that as well, but definitely something to look forward to to increase the stability of DAI there. Stable coins are all the rage at the moment, and that was one of the things we predicted last year, and it's making it easier for all these telecom giants and others to start having the confidence to accept crypto. Now, a lot of these are just going to get Bitcoin and then sell it. But if we can get them to accept stable coins in the future, for example, maybe they're going to hold their crypto or maybe they're going to speculate and hold the Bitcoin. So look, good news that these household names are accepting crypto, but we want them actually holding crypto and maybe stable coins are the next step in that sort of adoption. In terms of stable coins, Russia now talking about a gold-backed crypto. So there's a number of good gold-backed coins out there. In Australia, we've got Ainsley Bullion with their gold and silver-backed coin. We know that Digex Dow is one that I've been really positive on, but let's see if Russia are going to you know, create their own. Maybe this is why Russia and China have been buying so much gold to actually issue their own um, gold-backed cryptocurrencies. Another project I've been pretty excited about that's fallen behind is Amisa Go. So they've got version 0.2 out now. This is a big upgrade from the first RE release. One to watch, I think Plasma is going to be you know, very, very popular this year with all the different implementations. And I hope the Amisa Go guys can continue their progress there. In Australia, we've got Power Ledger and they continue to surprise us. So turning electric cars into mobile ATMs and these low carbon fuel standards, Carbon trading is another market that they want to get into as well as those uh, asset germination this year. So good on Power Ledger. They're one that has continued to develop well in the bear market. Another project that I was pretty excited about um, with my pharmacy background was Project Siobhan building the world's first genetics database. And they've done three updates this week. So hopefully they can turn it around and get back on track. But you can actually order your uh, genetics testing kit with those OMX tokens. And they've got a few good partnerships. So head over and read those announcements if you're uh, holding Siobhan there, guys. Now, Binance is launching margin trading very soon. So Bitfinex has got a lot of the volume. You know, BitMEX with their contracts has got the majority of volume now. So if Binance can capture those two markets, it's going to be even more of a behemoth. And it did break out to record highs again because the more trading volume they get, the better it is for that BNB token with those fees being burned and so on. So let me know how you guys, how high you think Binance token can go in the comments below. One pushback here is from Jake Shavinsky. I recommend you guys follow him on Twitter. He's a lawyer that's really in the know with crypto and he's saying that IEOs are just ICOs administered by exchanges and you know don't be fooled into thinking these are legitimate. So it is going to be interesting if these exchanges are cracked down on for issuing these projects as securities, particularly to US investors. So certainly something that could, you know, be a big headwind for someone like Binance, but these days all the exchanges are doing it. So if anything like that was to come out, it could be pretty negative for the crypto space with a knee-jerk reaction lower, just something to keep in the back of your mind. The Brave reward system is coming to Web 3.0. So the BAT token has done really well lately. More and more um, 
ways for you to reward your favorite influencers and get paid for watching ads. So uh, Brendan Ike there saying that uh, this is coming to Web 3.0, as well as that integration with the browser um, that we already have, most of you using you know, Google Chrome or the Brave browser. Now this story was about EOS, and EOS is having a great run lately speculation about um, you know them launching a social media marketplace or a new version of steam it on june 1st so look i'm not sure if that's going to be a buy the rumor sell the news sort of event or if it is going to be a spectacular announcement but uh this report out claiming that eos and block one were you know using eth from the ico sale to to rebuy a new eos and stimulate demand so uh, look guys it's crypto it's the wild west is this fair play? Does it even matter? Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Uh, but there's no doubt that um, you know you give any project a heap of Ethereum and they're going to use it to their advantage. You hand it over uh, that value, so it's up to them what they do with it in many ways. Bitcoin Cash was in the news this week. So a while ago, I spoke about the Bitcoin Cash or the Bitcoin Satoshi Vision block reorg that happened. And it went pretty much unnoticed and no transactions were reversed as such. But what we saw this week was the miners come together to actually change the course of history and redo those transactions uh, fr from the blockchain. So let me know what you guys think of this one. You know, have Bitcoin Cash further lost the trust of the community or was this warranted? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. In terms of Satoshi Vision, look, Craig Wright was in the news this week claiming that he has copyright over the Bitcoin white paper. The US Copyright Office came out the next day and said it doesn't recognize Craig Wright as Satoshi. There's a few misleading headlines. And again, Jake Shavinsky uh, chimed in and summed this up really well saying, you know, there's literally no such thing as being awarded a copyright under US law. So let me know what you guys think about this one is this going to continue to pop up but uh look this is why i put on um, that trade which i'll talk about at the end because there's always a surprise um, up their sleeve now i did i will talk about this when we go to the charts at the end but uh you know at the time there was blood in the streets and everyone thought bsv was going to die um this was just a little trade certainly not an investment recommendation but i'll touch on that once we get to the charts so Ethereum is handing out $30 million to network development. It's been one of the criticisms that they're not giving out enough grants. So great news that they are going to focus on you know, Ethereum 2.0, Plasma, and supporting the development of all those teams doing great work out there. And Vitalik did propose an on-chain mixer, which was pretty surprising this week when we consider that there's been three examples here you know, Europol, including or shutting down a crypto mixer. So if you don't know what that is, it's where you can send your coins um, to mix them up, to make them more private, because you know, we know that Bitcoin and Ethereum, we can use a block explorer uh, to trace uh, transactions. So Vitalik has been pushing for privacy. You guys know, I think this is gonna be one of the biggest headwinds for crypto going forward uh, when those big chains implement privacy. And it's also going to affect these investment vehicles. So it's great news that Grayscale are opening up their Ethereum Investment Trust, which is going to hold Ethereum. I think they own something like 2% of the world's Bitcoins in their Bitcoin trust. So great news, another big vehicle for investors to invest in these large cap coins. As I keep saying, this is where the money's all going to flow. But uh, yeah, something we have to be aware of when all these trusts um, are in place if we have private cryptocurrency. Now, in terms of the charts, on Friday night here, Litecoin was really coiling up and I thought Litecoin looked like it wanted to break. And sure enough, we got that pretty soon after. Litecoin jumped over 10% after I tweeted that. So I hope a few of you caught that. But um, before we talk about the trading, I wanted to mention this dollar cost averaging that one of our members did. So just $100 a week, doesn't sound like much, but already sitting on a profit of over $3,000 and accumulated you know, one Bitcoin there. So that's really great stuff. For a lot of people, I think they're starting to realize it's all about building your stash of, of Bitcoin, whether you're trading or whatnot. And for a lot of people, uh, a little app like Bamboo, um, guys, I am an advisor for these guys. This isn't a paid ad, but this is free to download. If you want to download this and you're on Apple, um, use the code Nuggets and you get $5 of free Bitcoin to start your journey. And you can start to round up purchases and build a little portfolio of Bitcoin or your favorite cryptos. Now, over the charts, and this is where I was tweeting about 
Bitcoin Satoshi vision being worth a trade when there's blood in the streets because you never know what's going to happen in the future. And well done. I know a few of you did double or more your money there, but uh, I'm getting out of that one now, guys. I didn't realize I was going to cop so much heat for suggesting a trade on that one. The other two that I just want to mention quickly are Matic and Link. So Charting Man Dan and I spoke about this the other day. When we have these huge run-ups, guys, it's going to give something back. When someone is sitting on 500%, 1,000% profits, they're going to take some money off the table. And this equilibrium pattern was exactly what Dan predicted the other day. So we want to watch now if this is going to break bullish or have a further retracement there because Matic and uh, Chainlink, there's a few other projects that I've really noticed that seem to be getting pushed by a lot of influencers um, all at once. So I'm not saying that's a bad thing. They're doing their job. If they're disclosing and whatnot, that's fine. But just be aware that when that happens, we get a lot of excitements all, all at once. It's the same with these IEOs. They tend to go parabolic. And that's when they get in the news and the headlines and all these Facebook groups. And unfortunately, there's always people that chase them there at the wrong time. So look, just be cautious. Um, Chainlink did hit this $1.50 level a little while ago, and it's back up right double testing uh, that top there. So let's see which way this one breaks again. The next chart I want to look at is Ethereum Bitcoin pair. And we had a big breakout here on the daily. We've come down to test this level again that's been tested four or five times now. And this can mark the start of alt season if Ethereum leads. So something that I'm really watching closely is for a break above here, a bull break on that weekly chart. And that will mean the Ethereum US dollar pair does perform really well. Geez, these patterns are getting tight, guys. As you can see here last night, Litecoin broke out, retested 105. But let's have a look at that Bitcoin chart because all eyes are on this pattern that is starting to form here. So we've got a bit of an ascending triangle as, we, as we're talking right now. Geez, we're getting tight, guys. If I had to... Look, I think this is all really bullish and everyone wants Bitcoin to go up. There's lots of new buyers in the market, but the only thing I'm a little bit hesitant about is these longs versus shorts, which you guys know I keep an eye on. Now for Bitcoin, we've got 62% longs, but it's for Ethereum where people have got really greedy at 76% uh, margin longs there. So look, if I had to have a guess, I think we're going to get some sort of shakeout. I don't think it's going to be an easy ride. We're just going to break up and everyone's going to make money. When we've got so many margin longs, it's more like likely that we're going to have some sort of shakeout to try and get rid of those speculators if we are to then proceed higher. And look, I certainly think that, you know, these these um, charts we're seeing, 10,000, mid nines, that's on the cards for, just from this technical setup that we have here. Now, if we want to have a look at our uh, cycle brackets, that date that we're looking for a bottom is not till, you know, May 29th, May 30th there. So there's still a few days left for this to push higher, but we were talking about um, the weekly and the daily RSI being pretty overbought last week and we did need to consolidate and that's what we've done guys. We've just chopped around with these moving averages as support. So there's nothing really to worry about yet. There's no bad signs. Decreasing volume on this consolidation. As I said, everything tells me that this should follow through, but it's just that longs versus shorts ratio, which has me a little bit concerned. That's all for today, guys. If you want more information about all the services we offer, head over to nuggetsnews.com.au. Otherwise, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, share these videos around, and thanks for tuning in, guys. Cheers.